you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to ask question 111 of 2017, and the question is forwarded to the Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Elevation. The question is, can the Minister inform this House on the progress of the 2017 National <coughs> Women's Expo preparation? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, and I give the floor to the Honourable Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Elevation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The 2017 National Women's Expo, which will be held at the Vodafone Arena from the 14th to the 16th of June, uh, was um, initiated back in 2014, Madam Speaker, under your leadership. It's basically an initiative uh, with the aim of connecting rural women to markets. For the 2017 uh, Women's Expo, the Ministry has thus far finalized the provincial craft shows from where we select women who will represent their communities and their uh, pro provinces to the Expo in June. There will be a total of 500 rural women from the various provinces that will be re represented at the Women's Expo. The selection of these uh, women was done by the Fiji Arts Council for Artifacts and the Ministry of Health for food, uh, food preparations. So thus far, after the craft shows, Madam Speaker, the Ministry is working with stakeholders, uh, both government and non-government as well, in uh, preparing for the logistics for the upcoming uh, National Women's Expo. Again, Madam Speaker, the main aim behind this is the empowerment, economic empowerment of women and connecting them uh, to markets. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Thank you. Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Minister, for your explanation and I applaud the, the, the initiative. But for a more sustainable approach, can the minister explain what development partners or business uh, partners have been engaged to work with this women's group to access international market for their products? Thank you, Madam Thank Speaker. You, minister. Madam Speaker, as I stated, the main aim is connecting women to markets. Uh, you would have, uh, no, in initiating this, it was obvious that uh, there was evidence that there was a lack of uh, marketing of rural women's products. There are a lot of women out there who are producing artifacts that can be sold nationally and internationally as well, but it's uh, the uh, marketing that was the issue here. So sustain uh, sustainability of these markets, yes, the ministry is currently working very um, hard at uh, looking at a model that will be sustainable for these women. The annual Women's Con uh, Expo is, like I said, an annual event. It's once a year. It's um, started, this is the third one, and uh, we're already working towards a long-term strategy. What is that? Uh, we're looking right now at putting together a catalog, first of all, to, to catalog the products that are being produced by these women, particularly those that will be represented at the Women's Expo. What happens after the Women's Expo? Um, first of all, it will be just through social media, Facebook being a very powerful tool for marketing uh, these days. And of course, longer term, we are um, already speaking with the National Marketing Authority if there is any um, potential there. And um, also, standalone uh, marketing of rural women's products. Uh, we've uh, started talks as well with the, um, uh, the Center for Integrated Development for the Asia Pacific region to look at uh, models in other Asia Pacific countries that have been successful, been seen as successful. So, yes, Madam Speaker, long term strategy, those, uh, that's what we're doing at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Politini. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, supplementary question. Can the Honourable Minister inform this August House on some of the benefits this initiative will have for these women participating in the Expo? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Benefits, Madam Speaker. For starters, uh, some of these women have never had an opportunity to sell what they're making uh, to customers. Here in Suva, they, that will be an opportunity. It's also an opportunity to have their products recognized as Fijian made, Fijian crafted. That licensing is done uh, in conjunction with the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Uh, from 2015, a total of around 43 women 
have been licensed uh, as Fijian made, Fijian crafted products. So that is another benefit that will come out of this. Apart from that, there will be um, side events around the expo itself with the general theme of economic empowerment of women. That again is an opportunity to, um, for training for women, capacity building, and to get them to see what else is available out there by way of marketing and uh, uh, quality um, standards for their products. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Bandi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I welcome the initiative by the Minister, but my question is uh, whether there are protections of uh, in uh, whether there are protections of tangible intangibles artifacts to, to not only on the economic uh, the benefits but the, the, ben the benefit of uh, protecting the artifacts in the the protection in the intellectual property rights. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think, Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member might be referring to the protection of traditional knowledge. That is something that can be addressed with the Ministry of Itauke, which I'm sure is also looking at that matter. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Supplementary question, uh, Madam Speaker. Supplementary question. This is in regards to uh, South Pacific Business Development uh, for Women, and the uh, Honorable Minister was a uh, guest to open the, the um, during the annual uh, um, annual uh, celebrations at uh, the at the Vodafone Arena. My question is: uh, Does uh, this SPBD also uh, will be included into this expo? Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker, SPBD is also a stakeholder in preparations for the National Women's Expo. They are critical in that they are a, um, an institution that provides finance to rural women for income generating pro projects. With that, with that aim in mind, they sure do complement what we do at the Ministry. And uh, along with other financial institutions as well, there's uh, Westpac and BSP that uh, does financial literacy training for women at the, uh, the various, as a standard um, operation of the ministry and also in conjunction with the National Women's Expo. Madam Speaker, uh, evidence shows that access of women to finance is an issue that is prevalent not only nationally but internationally as well. SPBD is one of those institutions that, um, that harnesses this aim and uh, delivers uh, on uh, the aim of financial inclusion for women, particularly from rural areas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Politao. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> My question to the Honorable Minister. You know, some of the problems that are faced by women is the transportation. We're talking about women from as far as Undu Point coming to Lambasa, the economic centers, and those are the costs that are associated. But when they come to a National Women's Expo, they bring artifacts. And sometimes they, it's not sold, and it's kept. And probably when it's sold, then the money is uh, transferred to them. And they've been facing difficulties in the, um, the late payment that is coming. Is there uh, you know, measures in place in order to improve uh, uh, you know, the sale of their artifacts and them receiving the, 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 the money on time? when it's collected uh, at here in Suva after the Expo. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, I think the Honorable Member is talking again about marketing of women's products. That was the whole essence of what I've been talking about here. Uh, as for the transport of uh, these ladies, uh, that cost is borne by government for this particular initiative. And uh, we are also looking at ways that the Expo can sustain itself in the years to come. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Premsey. Thank the Minister for her response. Um, the Expo, the Women's Women's Expo, uh, has, this is the third year going. What are the lessons learned and what are the challenges that continue to be faced by women? Thank you, Honorable Minister. Lessons learned, Madam Speaker, all good lessons. 
It's an initiative that I think has really achieved the initial aim of uh, connecting women to markets and also to, first of all, just uh, exposing women to what's out here in uh, the urban centers and ways in which that they are, ways in which they can tap into untapped markets. Uh, we are talking about rural women who can now produce for hotels, for the tourism market. We have a market here nationally before we even think about international markets. And that is something that uh, we, uh, uh, was, we are honing in on, uh, the national markets, first of all. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. If I could just uh, uh, add, add my concern to what was expressed by my colleague, um, Honorable Van Lee. In the event um, a company or a buyer comes, across, comes along and likes one of the motives, motives of, of, the, of, the, um, of what the lady is uh, um, producing, which could be unique to the region, what, what, would be the protect, what, what would be the process for that lady to have her motive, which would be an intellectual right, uh, to, to come under protection? Is there a way that there's a legal assistance given to the person? And be mindful of the fact that the Fiji Airways motive created a lot of controversy because it belonged to some people, I believe, in Tabiuni, and we, in Lao, I think, and uh, it created a lot of controversy that it was not obtained legally. So is there a provision from governments to provide backing to these to the women in the event somebody wants to use one of their motives on the products. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Again, Madam Speaker, traditional knowledge, that is something that uh, the Ministry of Itauke Affairs, uh, they have a unit that actually mapping all these uh, products and which region they're peculiar to. Um, I do know that there has been, uh, there is a draft law on traditional knowledge and protection of that um, that is being mooted within the Ministry. It's something that uh, the Honourable Member might want to direct to the correct ministry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you.